Hi everybody, welcome to the Evangelist Nick Garrett channel. I want to tell you a story today about the Apostle Peter and some of the early apostles and uh, an interesting connection to a video we recently did, part five of the Dead Sea Scrolls. And in it we looked at Genesis 8 and 9 and the words that God spoke to Noah. After the ark had landed in the mountains of Ararat, out of gratitude, Noah made an altar and he burnt a burnt offering to God of clean and unclean animals, creeping things, birds, and the aroma was pleasing to God. And God says to himself, you know, I'm not going to destroy all of mankind again. But at that time, we thought it was interesting in the video we talked about two things. One, God placed the fear in animals of humankind, at the same time giving all of the everything to humankind for food. And he placed a limitation on living blood, tampering with living blood. Now let me tell you the story about Peter. Some of the apostles and brothers in Judea start hearing about Gentiles becoming converts to Christianity in the early days after Jesus' ascension. So Peter shows up at Jerusalem and they confront him and they're like, hey, Peter, what is this we're hearing about Gentiles becoming converts? And Peter goes, dude, you don't even know. I was in Joppa, right? And I was praying and I went into a trance and had a vision. And in this vision, guys, like something, an object, an object came down from heavens with four corners by the four corners. And on it, the vision then went to the earth where I saw four footed beasts and creeping things and birds. And it was all good. And Peter's like, I've never eaten anything unclean. And Peter was corrected. You don't get to call what God has blessed clean, unclean or common. So this is a very interesting thing. Remember what happened with Noah was before Abraham. It was before the Mosaic law and dietary restrictions. And now all of a sudden, these things aren't necessary. And Peter interprets it as, hey, the Gentiles can become converts too. This only happens if Jesus Christ is actually God. If he is the one like the Son of Man that has come. If he is the one with power to negate anything the fallen ones had done. Now it's back to what is said later in Genesis 9 where God basically says, if a life is taken, someone will give an accounting directly to me. And as we recall that when Jesus died on the cross, the veil in the temple was rent in two, signifying that now that which was blocking humanity from God is no longer there through Jesus. And Jesus rising from the dead shows us that God is indicating, yes, this is the means by which the curse is lifted. This is the means by which the gauntlet that I laid down in Genesis 3, the enmity, this is the ultimate. Doesn't matter when it happens, today or 2,000 years from now, it is finished. Whether Jew or Gentile, it is finished. The story I just told you is basically Acts chapter 11, almost verbatim. And I think it's really interesting the end it goes back to the beginning it's a fascinating account you should read Genesis 8 and 9 and then Acts 11 and see these connections it's cool uh, anyway thank you uh, for, for checking it out if you want to see the video I'm talking about I'll pop it up somewhere around here if I don't have the ability to do that it's one of the recent ones uh, I'll pop it up here I'll put it up on the screen um, God bless you my friends I hope your work today bears fruit uh, I want to say a special prayer today, uh, God, uh, th that you would be enough for us, that you would guide us in the way we'd go, that you would guide our words that might be useful, that anybody struggling with sleep or sleeping habits in this digital age where these phones are in our hands, God, that those people might pray for restful sleep, and when they awaken, that they might offer you their gratitude for that restful sleep, uh, for any who are struggling with that. And God, I will also uh, pray that uh, anybody who would support our work, 
that you would let them know to support our work via any means, whether PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, buying a book, buying a shirt, a mug, whatever. God, you know what my needs are. You know what other people's needs are. You know what we all have. Please see to our daily bread. Amen. All right, guys, until the next one, kick this around for a while. Oh, the Bible is so deep. I absolutely adore it. I, I love getting these little nuggets where you go, wait a second, didn't I see somewhere else clean and unclean creeping things and the birds of the air? Mm, yeah, that was back in Genesis 8 and 9, and here it is in Acts 11, too. We've always been told this story is about eat, whether or not to eat pork. Pork's a clean meat or not a clean meat, about the Mosaic law. And it turns out that it's God returning through Jesus Christ to the relationship with the individual and the individual being made right with God. That's all I got for you. God bless you till the next one. Thanks.